Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker here. Um, I just uh, wanted to share a little drive I'm making to my daughter-in-law's. Um, she always works. She works all the time. She's in retail and she's looking to get out of it. But anyway, I'm in a small town close to where they live and she wanted to go antiquing today. So I told her I would love to do that. I had an appointment today originally and told her I couldn't go, but it canceled yesterday at the last minute. So I, f I immediately texted her and said, we can go. She's only off today and tomorrow. And she was so bummed that I, that I couldn't, um, couldn't go. Uh, so at any rate, um, I'm on my way to get her and I'm this is my favorite way to get here it's kind of a roundabout way to get here but it's just gorgeous so I'm gonna pause the um, pause the video and I'll be right back okay guys I am back uh, we are headed down to their town and one of my favorite antique stores here we're gonna probably stop by later looks like they're open I wanted one reason why I wanted to come this way it was to see if they were open and uh, anyway it's just a gorgeous drive um, just small town and small town America they live in a lovely area um, down the line I can see myself moving down here uh, the only the only issue with down here is it's not real close to medical if I were to need it as I get older but anyway but we're going to go antiquing today. We're going to look around. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go. But um, hopefully I find some, some really cool things. And um, I can show you guys um, at a later point. If you are watching this video, then I did make a pickup or discovered something interesting. So I'm going to pause it until, the, until we can see a little bit more on this ride. So I'll be right back. This is where the uh, ride gets very scenic. Lovely uh, little uh, reservoir we're passing here. Gorgeous. And uh, this is this is my favorite way to come down here. Um, it's a gorgeous day. It is usually, uh, you know, we're after Thanksgiving. A few years ago, uh, my daughter-in-law remembers it's snowing like crazy when they came up for uh, came up to see us at Thanksgiving and it was cold and now it's almost 60 degrees they say it's going to be in the 60s today um uncharacteristically warm for this time of the year hey guys Lady Liberty Stacker I am back um yeah I made a few purchases yesterday but really nothing for me a couple of small things that I can uh, do on eBay nothing that I'm going to show here um, this, what you, what you see before you is a number three, uh, 709B Griswold, uh, skillet. And this is actually going to be for my daughter-in-law for Christmas. Uh, we had stopped at that first antique store I showed you guys on the way to pick her up. And, uh, and anyway, uh, we were in the antique store for quite a while browsing, and she found something else that she liked, and she really didn't have the money for, to buy it, so I said, here, I'll get it for you for Christmas. So I bought it for her, and she'll get that for Christmas. And uh, she she loves to collect um, antique teacups and saucers and things like that. So it's really cool. It's something we can do together. Anyway, on the way out, I saw this skillet. It was in that old kettle that I passed up on a month ago. And there was two of them. There was one that was unmarked, and then there was this one that's a Griswold. You can hardly see it. It's number three. It's really, there's not a lot of rust on it, but there's a lot of crud. And she goes, oh, she goes, this is great for Eggs Benedict. And I said, do you want this? She goes, oh, yes. Well, I got a really good deal on it. It was only 10 bucks. Anything at this shop, they sell for 10 bucks. It doesn't matter. This kind of pan, even though it's crusty, would probably go for 20 to 30 at an, any other antique store because it's a Griswold. But uh, here it was 10 bucks. So I'm going to uh, fix it up for her. I'm going to put it into a lye bath and um, 
you know, I'll go ahead and show you my live bass setup and we'll go ahead and put that in. And I just wanted a record of this. This is going to be restored for her for Christmas and you guys can see how I'm doing these now. I do quite a few of these as I get them in and it's easier to do it in a lye bath followed by a vinegar soak. And I may buy a product called Evapo Rust if there is some crazy rust to get off of it. Um, I don't think this guy's going to need it. Uh, the skillets are pretty easy to do. That's going to come into play for things that have a lot of nooks and crannies like cornbread pans if I ever do those again or muffin pans. Those are almost impossible to get it all off. Uh, just because of all the nooks and crannies, but this one should be easy. All right, guys, I will be back. Okay, guys, I'm out in my garage here, and I actually had this out on my patio. It works best, a lye bath works best when it's warm, but um, you can use it up to a year over and over again. It makes sense if you have a lot of skillets to do. So this is what it looks like. It's all the crud that's come off of previous pans that I've done. It's five gallons of water first when you put it in a large container like this, uh, followed by one pound of 100% lye crystals. And you can get that at the hardware store. Sometimes they'll have it behind the counter because people use it for uh, maybe illegal uses, that kind of thing. So um, at any rate, I've got to take off the string on my skillet here. So I will be right back. So we're gonna put this guy into the lye bath and when you work with lye you really need to have gloves on I use heavy-duty rubber gloves that go up on my elbow not to my elbows but on my wrists but right now I'm just gonna drop it in we're gonna check it probably tomorrow it's gonna take probably a couple of days at least to get this off so we're just gonna go ahead and there it is we're gonna go ahead and check it so I will be back at when we check it. Okay, guys, um, right now what you're seeing is I, I kind of fast forwarded it because there's a lot of uh, information to go through. That blue is a silicone pad that I use to protect my sink. I'm rinsing the pan in warm water, and you can see the discolored water come off the pan. I have my gloves on to keep my hands clean, and I'm using a 00 to 00000 scouring pad, which can be purchased at the hardware store um, or the um, Home Depot or Lowe's. So that is the next step in the process. Okay, what you see here is I'm rinsing out the pan with a hand mild dawn dish detergent and with the scouring pad trying to get all that crud off of there with my gloves on. I do take them off so I can feel that the pan is uh, how smooth it is on the exterior and the interior and I'm giving it a, a uh, Rinse in cold water to prevent flash rust. Now I'm showing you the crud on the pan. I'm probably gonna have to take a wire wheel to it. Inside it's very smooth, on the outside there's still a lot of crud and it's gonna have to go back in the lye. Well, I put the pan back into the lye bath for an additional three days. Guys, this is a stubborn pan. So uh, like I say, uh, this will, you can keep it in there as long as you want. I'm attempting to pull it out right now with my gloves on. You don't want to work with lye without gloves on. It will burn your skin. Uh, so we take the pan out. We take a look at it. It does. It's coming along. It still has some of the crud on there. Looks like I'm going to have to put it into a vinegar soak. Look at that carbonized seasoning. It just won't come off. So um, anyway, I'm going to be doing that in the next step in the process and letting you guys uh, check that out. So it's going to soak a little longer, and then I'm going to soak it in vinegar, 60-40% solution. What you guys are now looking at is my pan. It's gotten some of it off, but it's still very stubborn carbon seasoning that will not come off from a lye bath alone. And it has stubborn carbon seasoning on the back as well. So we're going to soak it in a 60%, 40% vinegar water solution. And for little pans like this and little objects, you can use this seven quart drip pan that I purchased for a dollar at or for a dollar at the dollar store. It's plastic and it comes in handy just transporting things back and forth as well between where I put it in a lye bath and where I'm gonna uh, rinse it off in the sink. Um, so we're putting in 60% uh, vinegar plus 40% tap water. We're putting in the pan. It's not quite covered. So we want to add a little bit more vinegar and then water, keeping our 60-40% uh, ratio. It seems to work the best in my experience. 
and we're going to let it sit there for anywhere from a half a day to a day. We're checking on it periodically and seeing how it does. So here we go. Now what you're looking at is the pan after it's soaked a little bit more in vinegar. And um, it's working on the carbonized seasoning on the bottom. It's gotten everything off from the sides and the handle of the pan. You can now clearly see the three Griswold. The back looks really good. The rest of it can be wire brushed off on my electric 6-amp drill. I just like to get most of the, the um, crud off that I can because it does fly everywhere. It gets very, very messy. Uh, I guess the best solution for this would be electrolysis, but a lot of us don't do electrolysis, so you got to be patient when working with this type of a method. And uh, we're going to put it back in the vinegar for a little bit longer and see how it does. Okay, we put it back in. It took a little bit more off, but it didn't take enough off that satisfies me. So because time is of the essence and this is a Christmas gift, I've decided that I'm going to use Easy Off Oven Cleaner, the heavy-duty variety. It's the yellow can. You can get it at your local grocery store. I paid about $3.90, and that is just stubborn carbonized seasoning there that's built up over the years. If you don't have access to electrolysis, this is about the only other way you can do it. So you coat, put the pan in a garbage bag, coat the interior and the handle uh, with the Easy Off Oven Cleaner, wearing a mask, wear gloves, you want to make sure, why well, I didn't have gloves here, I cheated, but you want to make sure you wear gloves and have a mask so you don't breathe in the chemicals. Interior first, the exterior, then wrap it up really good trying to get all the oxygen out of it. And you're going to let it sit there and you're going to let it soak for a good 24 hours. And you're going to come back the next day and you're going to check it and see how it does. And you may need another round. So keep it away from pets and children. Let it soak for 24 hours and check the progress the next day. Here it is the next day. We're going to go ahead and check the progress. I did mainly the interior cooking surface of the pan. Probably should have done the whole thing because it was a little spotty in the back where the lye from the cook or the oven cleaner seeped down. But you can see it worked on some of the interior seasoning there. And I probably could have done this a little bit longer, but it gets pricey and you don't we don't have the time to do that. So we're going to use the steel wool. Uh, scouring pads. I'm going to go up to the higher grade. Then They range from 0, 0, 0, 0 all the way up to number 3. The higher the number, I used I think a number 3 here, the coarser it is and the easier it will get off uh, stubborn seasoning. And again, I'm going to use the Dawn dish detergent and I'm going to rinse it off with a scouring pad, doing the back first and the sides. And you can, it's that's taking care of the splotchy part on the back side. As you can see there, it's starting to look really good. Doing the interior, the interior is smooth, but because she isn't a collector, it doesn't matter if it, does, if it doesn't look perfect. It does not look perfect by no means. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a rub down on the interior. And then once I'm done, I'm going to give it a, a treatment uh, with my blue Scotch-Rite uh, pads and a vinegar water combination just to neutralize the lye from the easy off oven cleaner and you can see there that the results of this look pretty doggone good so there's my water vinegar rinse and the blue scotch right pad and it neutralizes the pan anytime you use easy off it's recommended that you do this um, and you can see how good it's starting to look and uh, there we go going to go ahead and rinse it off in very cold water to prevent flesh rust from forming on the pan. It works great if you do this every time. There we go. Now we are downstairs with my wash basin next to the washer and dryer, and it's easy, probably a little bit easier to do it down here, or at least neater to do it down here. You have to bend over so it's tough on the back, but um, you know, it's noisy away from the rest of the house and the mess is easier contained. I'm going to go ahead and use my earmuffs um, that I purchased at Harbor Freight. You'll see them here in a minute. There they are. I use them while mowing the grass, any uh, at the shooting range. It keeps the sound to a minimum. And then I attach a two inch wire wheel brush to my Black & Decker 6 amp drill there. Go around in circles to uh, do the sanding. 
Okay guys, this is what the pan looks like when it's all done. I used the, my electric drill with that two inch wire wheel brush right there. And I also had to use an Avanti Pro crimp wire wheel two inch a disc to try to get some of that stubborn seasoning off there. Um, there's another one that's bigger, but this pan is small, so I had to stick with that. It took most of it off. The surface is smooth. The back has all the crud removed. And it should look like a silvery color like that when you do this correctly. Um, that's what a, 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 a strip pan will look like just before it's ready to be seasoned. And one more thing, guys, I forgot to cover. Um, I'm not going to be able to season this probably until tomorrow or this evening, depending on uh, uh, what how my day goes. But when you're not going to season right away, I like to cover it with a coat of Crisco olive oil cooking spray uh, just to protect it from rust until I can season it. Um, that's why it looks a little bit different here. And you can see when you wipe, wipe the, uh, I spray it on, then I wipe the oil back off. There's still a thin layer on. And you can see some of the residue from the uh, sanding comes off on this uh, paper towel. So it's always important to wipe out the pan thoroughly with a paper towel. I don't want to put water on it and, and give it more chance to rust, but I did a, a thin uh, coat of oil on the back of this. You can kind of see it's going to turn out really nice. Um, but I do that to protect it until I can season it. And uh, there we go. So I will be back with the final results after three to four rounds of seasoning. Okay, guys, I am back. Uh, today is December 21st, 2017, and I finally got this pan restored. This was the most difficult pan I have done to date, and I've probably done 20 of them by now uh, since the summertime. Um, besides electrolysis, this is probably the best way to do it. Uh, but, you know, when you get into it, sometimes pans are stubborn and you have to improvise and you have to kind of throw some things in. So if you got to this point in the video and you watched everything, I really thank you guys for that. And you're helping yourselves out because you just have to improvise sometimes. You have to kind of go back and repeat steps. Um, I even had one skillet where I didn't like the way it looked. I went After I seasoned it and stripped it, I went and did it again just because I didn't like the way it looked. And uh, that happens to be one that I sold for more than twice what I paid for it uh, for top dollar on eBay. I just sold it a few days ago. So hopefully the uh, buyer will enjoy my work. <laughs> anyway, this is after uh, four rounds of seasoning in the oven. It is a number three Griswold Erie PA 709B skillet. You can see all the crud has come off. It still sits flat. I have some pictures to show you. And this is what it looks like on the inside. It is very smooth. It cooks great. I broke it in. Did an egg sandwich day one. It stuck. Day two, I did a fried egg. There is some carbon, car, not carbon, but excess uh, seasoning stuff that flaked off. Uh, and then the third day, I did a breakfast sandwich. And that I ate. And it was good. And it didn't stick. So the pan works great. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. The only other way to get this dark stuff off is probably to do um, hydrolysis, which I'm going to research a little bit in 2018 to see if I want to get involved with that. It might work in situations like this. Um, but my method, uh, even though it took a while, totally brought this pan back to life. I think she's really going to like it. And uh, just wanted to show you guys her final results, and she's going to have it in time for Christmas. Anyway, guys, uh, please leave a question or a comment below in the comment section. Give me a thumb up, and uh, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, Happy New Year, whatever you celebrate, and uh, go make it a great day.